from Soho, New York City, it's Werb Electronics with Becky Stern. Hi, I'm Becky Stern. Welcome to another episode. Today we are going to discuss, get, you guessed it, wearable electronics. Yeah. So what's on today's show? On today's show, we're going to talk about Maker Faire. Maker Faire is coming up. Gemma, our new miniature wearable electronics platform. It's here. It is here. We're going to have Component of the Week, we're going to have Wearable Wednesday, Material Spotlight, can answer your questions. We're going to give away a special prize. All that and more on Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern. Okay. All right, we're here. We're here. Nice earrings. Thank you. This is this week's project we're going to talk about in just a minute. But first, the very brief news. We're going to Maker <laughs> Fair this weekend. Yeah. And um, want you guys to go to Maker Fair as well. I'll be scoping out some cool wearables projects. And so if you're, um, I'm going on Friday. So if you're a maker with a project, I'll try to find you on Friday and um, take a picture and put it on the Adafruit blog. And we always love seeing all the cool stuff that people make, especially with Adafruit gear at Maker Faire. It's just a super fun time. And we have a picture of me and um, Lady Ada from Maker Faire last year. That's right. I was doing a, um, a ride with the Madagascar Institute um, called the Dueling Mechanical Bulls. And so we were all dressed up like matadors. This picture. Oh, sorry. Yeah, of me and Lady Ada. Yeah. Remember you had this, uh, uh, it, it was like a big, uh, Inflated thing. Yeah, a big so like, if you bouncy fell castle off. floor. Yeah, if, was, if you fell off of it. We actually literally had a bouncy castle house make us a bouncy castle floor to go <laughs> around our mechanical bulls, and that was possibly more fun than the actual bulls themselves. That's a nice phone call. Hi, I'd like a bouncy castle. Yeah, sure, and they were more than happy to make us a custom. I, if you ever need, I got the, yeah, they did a really <laughs> good job too in San Diego. Um, so, um, yeah, I don't know, go to Maker Fair. Yeah, we'll be there on. Um, well, sort of part of our staff is going to be there over the weekend. Um, Lamore and I are probably going to be there on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And uh, this Saturday on Ask an Engineer, we're going to have um, the SparkFun folks out oh, yeah, on the show. It. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's like everyone's coming in town. Tomorrow here at Adafruit, we have um, scheduled visitors, a lot of stuff going on from um, Maker Faire as well. Um, the new COO, uh, Greg, of, and president of Make, is going to stop by. Just oh, got really? the job. Yeah. Oh, okay. Formerly a Pixar and Disney executive. That's right. Now uh, president and COO of Make. So that's interesting. It is really interesting. Yeah, so. Cool. Yeah, all I right. like seeing all It's nice when all of the visitors come to us. Yeah. Well, uh, it's New York. Li living in New York, it's like you never hurt for people to come visit you. Yeah. You know? Like it, everybody's like, hey, can I crash on your couch? Hey, it I'm is. Gonna be in town. It is so like that. So that's really fun. It's really fun to see all our friends. Um, and then um, I have some students uh, who are exhibiting some stuff at Maker Faire. I'll yeah. just talk over this yeah. video. Yeah, One of my video. students, Katie McElroy, made this um, chameleon bag. It's a purse that um, changes color with RFID tags. NFC uses our NFC board and a Borduino and our light up pixels um, so that like she puts an RFID tag in her scarf or whatever that tells her bag to turn like the three colors that are in the scarf. Um, and um, her and a bunch of uh, her classmates from the program I teach in an SVA called Products of Design are having a uh, tent full of their cool creations, so many of which they made in my class, which is really fun. And what is, um, I guess just briefly, like what is your, what is your class mostly about? Is it it's wearable electronics? Making. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like about a learn, it's like these are product design students-ish, you know, new yeah. age product design students who are learning from me, like Arduino and sewing. That's so right. we're combining them together, but they're not necessarily, they're like, they're often objects outside of the body, but sometimes they are also worn on the body. But yeah, like combining, they're just, you know, they're learning Arduino for the first time and That's using right. floras. And um, another one of my students made a, um, a like plush light bulb that lights up inside. And like, that's what oh, he's going to cool. have in the booth at Maker Faire. And another one made a, um, a hanging cloud lamp. It looks like a cloud that hangs from the ceiling, like fluffy, but it's got all these electronics and like a speakers inside it. Oh, that's and, cool. And it um, make it has a remote and it like makes lightning flashes and like thunder sounds. So it's a cloud. It's a cloud lamp. Elect electronic cloud. Yeah, it's an electronic that's cloud. Cool. So that's cool. Check out those projects and um, all right. At Maker Faire. Um, today's code is Gemma. Ten percent off everything in the Flora and Werb Electronics section on the Adafruit store. Uh, Gemma, because it's our new product launch. Um, this is Wearable Wednesday, so today, uh, 
starting now and forever, we're going to have Gemma projects. Uh, Gemma is our wearable electronic platform. Um, it's the main on that. Uh, yeah, we're going to want to go over to a component of the week. Now. Or no, we're going to do the um, the video. Right. So we released yeah. Gemma. Our first, we figured we would just do a Gemma project right away. Why not, right? So we made a Gemma project. I'm wearing it. You want to watch the video? Only we had a video that showed what this was. Oh, holy. Meet Gemma, Adafruit's new super tiny wearable electronics platform. We'll be bringing you lots of projects with this bitty board, and for starters, we thought we'd put it in the center of a NeoPixel ring, perfect for a pendant or a pair of earrings. Let's get started. The wiring couldn't be simpler. Place Gemma in the center of the ring and solder connections to power, ground, and signal. Program over USB with the Arduino IDE to create any animation you like. Use a little clear thread to keep Gemma in position at the center of the ring. We're using purple so you can see it better. And then you can either attach an ear wire to the NeoPixel ring's output pin with a jump ring, or just glue a pendant hanger on the back. Plugging in the battery turns it on, and our tiny rechargeable LiPo can stick to the back with double stick tape. Each earring weighs just over 11 grams, which is totally typical for a pair of dangly earrings this size. So follow along on the Adafruit Learning System to build your own earrings or pendant, and then share your creations with us on our weekly show and tell on Google+. Don't forget to subscribe to the Adafruit channel here on YouTube, and tune in for our weekly live show all about wearable electronics with me, Becky Stern. I just made a whole bunch of them. Yeah, this is great. So you have lots of round things on you. I have NeoPixel rings all over. All of the NeoPixel rings. Well, they're perfect for goggles and earrings. So let's talk more about these earrings. The, um, yeah, you have some, some nice photos. From the Learn Docs, if you want to make your own. All the links from today's show are in the description below, including the link to the tutorial for the Gemma hoop earrings. And um, yeah, you program it over USB with the Arduino IDE. You can attach uh, an ear wire for earrings with a jump ring, or you can glue on a pendant back. Um, with some strong adhesive, if um, jewelry is, you know, the, like this is the easier route, and then earrings uh, require a little bit, you know, knowledge of the jump ring, and then um, the battery sticks on the back with double stick tape, and um, the Gemma is supported by a little bit of clear thread, and uh, yeah, they look really super sweet, and like I'm wearing them now and they're really comfortable, they, they get uncomfortable after maybe, you know, like three hours or so. These are some photos I took with long right. exposure, swinging the necklace back and forth. Wearing anything is uncomfortable for like three hours. Yeah, like I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, they say that about heels, right? Like the heels are only really supposed to, you, like you're only supposed to wear them for three hours and then take them yeah. off. Yeah. How long did this project take to, to make? Because I, I remember when we got Gemma in the store. Twenty minutes. Yeah, so this is like, this is a really fast one if you yeah. have a, an event that you want to go to or if you're just like, oh, like I, want to have electronics and I want to just get started. This is... Uh, yeah, less than an hour for the whole pair of earrings. Um, if you have soldering experience, they'll be a super quick project. Because the pixel ring is already all set up for you. You just have to... Uh, there's three... So, so like six yeah. solder joints. There's three wires and then like a tiny bit of making them into a thing that can go on your body. But they're not heavy. Yeah. Um, this code is Phil B's goggles code from the Kaleidoscope Eyes yeah. project that we actually made the NeoPixel rings for. And I just changed the color a little bit so that it would be... Yeah. Um, no, those look great. Yeah, so thanks, Philby. All right, next up, component of the week. I wonder what it is. Component of the week is Gemma. Big surprise, <laughs> it's Gemma. Yeah. Um, Gemma is based around the AT Tiny 85 chip, so it's got um, just you know three GPIO pins and um, a tiny bit of RAM on board, so it can do, but it can do a surprisingly lot, like large amount of stuff. So Flora often we find is like overkill for like the sneakers project, for example, yeah. the Firewalker sneakers. Um, all they needed was to take an analog input and control a strip of NeoPixels. And um, and we're pretty sure you can do that project with just Gemma. It, um, not all of our sensor libraries are supported. Like the, the, a lot of the I2C sensors use too much. The libraries are too big to fit. Um, but uh, analog sensors are fine and like 250 NeoPixels or something. Yeah. So like y you can do a lot with just this little guy and it's super cheap. Um, we're going to make like hair clips, right? Because it's so small. It's just. Yeah. And then here's the lineup. Um, Flora, Gemma, Trinket. And Gemma and Trinket are um, very similar. Um, 
And the so it doesn't have a battery port on it. So what I like yeah. about all the wearable stuff, we're really taking great consideration to make sure that if that you don't have to know how to solder to, to get started with it. Yeah. It helps, of course, and this project uses soldering, but the fact that it has a battery plug on it may, means it's pretty safe for beginners. Um, so that you don't have to like solder to a lithium polymer battery or um, you just plug in the battery and then connect whatever else you're working with, yeah. with conductive thread or wire. $7.95 too. Yeah, so that's amazing. So these earrings, by the way, the pair, 60 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> this is starting to be like QVC. Well, no, I mean, a lot of people, are, I'll do like the City Bike Helmet Project uses a lot of components. The yeah. watch uses a lot of components. It's not, it's not very inexpensive, you know, although yeah. watches are expensive too, but like compared to fancy earrings, yeah. 60 bucks for a pair, you know, because the, all the parts add up. The Neopixel ring's only like 10 bucks. So yeah. I pride myself on this affordability of this project as well. Good, good value. Good value. How did you take these um, photos, by the way? What did you use? An app that does blur or just camera? No, I used the camera with like a uh, half a second long exposure and just swung the, that was the pendant one. I just swung it in front of the That's cool. lens. Yeah, long exposure. So that you know, like you can see the sparkle, the code that does the sparkle sparkle. Yeah. Um, it, you see that it was like leaving trails as it went along. Okay. Super cool. Well, that was component of the week. Oh, no, Next the week. up. Material Spotlight. We're gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about electroluminescent panel. Halloween is coming up, and uh, electroluminescent panel is an easy way to add a creepy or Tron-like glow to whatever projects you're working on. It doesn't yeah. require any programming, um, no soldering, just plugs right into an inverter, and you can cut it out into any shape you want. We have it in aqua, blue, and white. And this is what the what it looks like when it's off. That's the... Um, the aqua panel and then the white panel when it's off actually looks a little bit pink because all EL by nature is aqua and they use filters to <laughs> change the color yeah. and um, that's what it looks like in our EL panel starter pack that comes with the right inverter um, and it's really cool a lot of people don't know you can cut EL panel to make it in any shape you want um, yeah. as long as you leave that terminal connected and so um, we have a couple projects that we wanted to share with you today um, we can just play the first yeah. video Easy to make these glowing chucks with Adafruit's electroluminescent panel and our new tiny inverters. People on the street might think you're from the future, but we'll know that you've just cut a circle of EL panel near where the wire connects, then stuck on a vinyl star and glued the whole thing in place. With the inverter hidden on the tongue of the shoe, your secret is safe with us. a pair in an afternoon and still have time to practice your moves before you hit the dance floor. Now we want to see the stars in your eyes. Show us your projects in our weekly show and tell on Google Plus and subscribe to the Adafruit channel here on YouTube for more wearable. And then uh, we have this little graphic if you just want to see the um, uh, just the shoes. The shoes. Yeah. yeah, that's really nice. Just see Phil's kickflip. Yeah, I almost landed a couple times. Yeah. And uh, you guys have some pictures of the, of the shoes here. in the panel. Yeah, so if you're looking to make like a Tron Halloween costume or a Halloween costume with like a light up element, um, the methods in this project described are, are probably pretty useful for you um, yeah. because you can block out sections of it with a uh, vinyl sticker and then you can cut around um, whatever shape you want and then attach it, glue it onto things. And now we have like a bunch of different size inverters. Once you cut it down, it reduces the amount of power it uses. And um, this circle that was the size for the Converse logo is like exactly the right size for our one um, AAA yeah. inverter. Um, so it makes the stick nice and small and portable. That's oh, whoops. The, the, yeah, yeah. The I skipped ahead a little bit there. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. Another EL panel project that we did was um, were some glowing Super Bowl helmets. And since I have heard that football has started, yeah, it's fall. Um, it's football time. It's football time. And also, you can use the technique that is shown in the next video to um, make a like helmet for your Halloween costume. Yeah. Do you have a favorite football team? I like the one that kicks the ball. That's my favorite one. <laughs> I call it Kiki Chevy Sports Ball. Kiki Chevy Sports Ball. Yeah, but anyway, um, to the video. I, I like EL panel, so the yeah. video. The backing with a pair of tweezers. Uh, depending on how delicate your sticker ends up, 
and you can go back to your artwork and thicken some of your borders if you want to make the sticker easier to apply. You want to test out the sizing by peeling out a big shape and placing it directly on the helmet. If it lines up perfectly, great, you're done. But most likely it'll be the slightly wrong size, either maybe stretched a little bit in one direction because the helmet's curved and you need to accommodate for that, uh, or just plain old too small or too big. So uh, go back to your dimensions and keep experimenting and cutting a new sticker until you're happy with the way it sits on the helmet. And then you'll make the final one, which you can put on your EL panel. Don't peel this final sticker yet. Some of those lines are kind of delicate still, and to get the best results possible, you'll want to stick this entire piece of vinyl to the EL panel, and then use tweezers to pick up the pieces you don't need. That'll minimize shifting in the design. To finish up, cut carefully around your design with a very sharp craft knife and a pair of scissors. A sharper blade is actually safer in this project because you're less likely to use too much force and accidentally stab or slice yourself. While we're on a safety kick, let's talk about plugging it into the inverter. You can see that uh, my design is a little bit of touch up after I light it up. Well, just remember to turn it off again before you apply that metal blade. EL panel, although low amperage, uses high volts and it will sting you uh, with a little bit of a shock if you're not careful. Route the wires and use double stick tape to apply the design to the helmet. If you want to put this somewhere where it might touch your skin, just stick the thing in the laminator or use some packing tape to insulate that electrified edge. To make a pair of dueling Super Bowl helmets, repeat with the other team's logo, and uh, you can plug everything into one inverter. Now since this EL panel is a lot smaller than uh, it originally was, it uses less power. So both of these logos are running off of one 4 AAA battery EL inverter uh, available in the Adafruit store. Okay. That was fun. That was one of um, our first projects in wearables after we moved to this space. Yeah. And uh, it's really neat because um, everybody has a sports logo and you can do something more. And like when I see the games on TV, everyone's always doing things with jerseys sure. or they're dressing up or they're doing something. I'm starting to see more and more uh, wearable electronic projects. Uh, yeah. in that. Well, and it's like in sports, wearable electronics is coming from a different kind of angle and there's lots of, there's lots of stuff happening. Like athletes are probably more like professional athletes are probably more aware of wearable electronics than like pop stars for example for like yeah. super celebrities just because like they use them um, they're developing like athletic performance wearables yeah um, they measure their performance and stuff but um i founded a design challenge right to make anybody to make the sports logos and we were planning to do this project before we knew who was going to be in the super bowl last year and like i don't yeah. remember who it was now but i was like really i remember being kind of upset that i had to do the the um the Ravens logo because yeah. it was a little bit complicated. <laughs> that, that one's harder, yeah. Why couldn't it just be uh, words or a I know, right? SF or something yeah, cause like that? Yeah, because the San Francisco one was pretty easy. Anyway, um, that's a cool um, technique, though, that a lot of people don't know. They can cut EL panel. Just be careful. It does That project zapped me a couple times. Um, yeah. And I've been told that the um, phosphor will degrade because it's uh, exposed to oxygen there at the very edge of the of the, um, yeah. of the panel that you've cut. So like you might want to also seal it. I don't know. Clear nail polish is my solution to everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, it's, uh, I don't know, it's good. EL yeah. panel's great. And tape is basically the same thing as EL panel. It's just long and skinny. And yeah. um, if you're wondering what it's made out of, it's like layers of, like an EL wire has the phosphor wrapped, like uh, coated on the outside yeah, of a wire. And EL pl um, tape and panel has it like laid down on a plane. So it's really nice, this even glow and it just plug yeah. it in and it goes. But the inverters do make a whistle. So like a lot of people are like, oh, I want to make EL covered headphones and put the inverter in the near your ear. Yeah, it does make a, a high-pitched sound, all inverters do. Um, yeah. We have a couple tips for minimizing that. You can kind of pat it and sure. put stuff around it. You can it, put hot glue or foam yeah. tape, but I still would never recommend you put it right next to your ear. Yeah, unless you like that sound. <laughs> all right, it's Q&A time. 
So question and answers. People are sending us questions oh, all yeah. the time. Oh yeah, how do we submit questions? If yeah. you want to ask a question, it is what makes you eligible for the giveaway, which today is a Gemma. Yeah. I'll put it on my eye. So if you want to win a Gemma, well, if you want to win next week's or a week after's giveaway, um, you post up your questions now in the comments, on Twitter, on Google+, on Facebook, wherever, Everywhere. via fax, whatever you want. And you, if your question is featured on the show, um, we'll enter you in the giveaway to win the prize. That's all how right. it works. So these questions have been entered. First question, <laughs> this is from Mano. My question, does Gemma support all the libraries that the floor supports? Does this also go for hardware? So we're, we're testing out lots of things. It does support the NeoPixel library. Um, we, we're not confident in the I squared C sensor libraries. Um, so no color sensor, accelerometer, or light sensor. Um, but uh, a lot of our other um, simple libraries, like the NeoPixel, not that the NeoPixel library is simple, but like um, smaller libraries. Yeah. And um, because it doesn't do I squared C. Yeah, so we'll see as more people start doing stuff. So the first week that Trinket came out, we have a servo right. library. You know, we updated. We were updating all the stuff as it's coming out. Sure. And so we're trying out stuff. So definitely servo motors, neopixels, analog sensors, anything, photo yeah. cells, regular. And that LEDs. covers a lot. Yeah, that's so. most projects people want to do. But we're we're trying out new things all the time. Um, yeah. I'm gonna I'm working on getting the capacitive touch sense library to work, yeah. which should um, then enable you to make fabric buttons like on our uh, plush NES controller. Okay. So you know we're get, we're getting there. We're trying it out, Mano. Yeah. Cool thing is, it's all open source. So that means if you want to help out, you can contribute too, and you'll actually see your work uh, out there in the world. This is why we do it. Mm -hmm. uh, next, uh, this is from Lance. Have you seen any NFC wearables like tap my shoulder to visit our website? Sure. Like that project we looked at earlier, which we have a picture of my students, um, my former students, NFC chameleon bag um, uses the NFC board. The problem with NFC wearables um, is that. I mean, you can have them interact with your phone, which is cool. Like, you can put a tag in your clothes and then have your NFC phone um, react to the tag somehow. But if you want to write your own reader software, like in this bag, where it changes color based on what item you scan to it, yeah. you need that big antenna in order to get the range. So it's fun. I mean, it could be worked into a fashion design, sure. But it, for now, um, NFC antennas are kind of big. Um, but with your phone, yeah, I've seen people do projects where they have tags in their clothes and then... Um, you can scan what you're wearing, like with your, with your phone. But Lance, why don't you make an NFC wearable and then share <laughs> it with us? Next up, this is from Julianne. Could a nail panel be put on the sole of a shoe, or would the pressure and the friction scratching from the ground cause too much damage too quickly? Is there a way around that? Um, the EL panel, the way it's made of a sandwich of, um, of phosphor and dielectric paste, and and then ultimately the the end. A uh, clear piece that faces you is plastic um, with a conductive coating on the inside. So it's like our ITO that we carry in the store. Um, so it's it's plastic and it'll get scuffed up. And then once you scuff that plastic layer, you're going to scrape off the phosphor and totally ruin your EL panel. I don't think it's durable enough to put on the bottom of shoes. Um, but the squeezing is not a problem. So if you were to put it on the bottom of shoes and then create a new sole on top of the EL panel that's clear, like an epoxy resin or yeah, a I've clear seen that. There's, there's shoes I've seen that it's it's clear and then you can see what's underneath it. Right. So, so you could try that, um, but it does involve like you know you you quickly get it down the road of like uh, rubber casting and stuff, which is a whole yeah. uh, ball of wax. Yeah. <laughs> ball of rubber. Ball of rubber. All right. Next up. This one uh, came in as a, a fax. Uh, I'm wondering if you have any floor products that are wireless for transmitting information rather than being tethered. If so, please email me that information. <laughs> if not, do you plan to develop such a line of products that are wireless? If so, what's the time frame for products to come to the market? Your response is greatly appreciated. Thank you for your very formal fax. Yes. Sometimes we get... Um, your, great, your very formal fax was greatly appreciated. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we get falcons that drop off. Messages. Um, there was I, a pigeon in my window. I looked for a little thing attached to its wrist. It didn't have a question attached to it. Yeah, I'm sure we'll see some type of um, pet project soon or bird project with the Gemma, and because stuff is all very lightweight. Sure, yeah. yeah. Who knows? Uh -huh. um, so I can answer this one. We're working on uh, a few wearable wireless things. So Bluetooth low energy is interesting to us. Um, XB. You know, the problem is the the weight and uh, power requirements. Uh, once you have something that's wireless. We do have a CC3000, that's the little Wi-Fi board that's very light and it's low power. Mm -hmm. So there is um, those types of things on the horizon. We're working on it. We're also getting FCC certification for our intentional transmitting things like that. Like and so, module. yeah, so, yeah. and we have it. Um, we just have to uh, release it. So uh, an upcoming product line is going to be called Bluefruit. 
So yeah, look so for that's that. great. So we'll use it with Flora and Gemma. All right. Last question. Today's question from Shay. Do you know of any conductive thread that can be loaded into a sewing machine? Our two-ply thread comes on a bobbin that you can put straight into your sewing machine. That was easy. Yeah. Yeah. This is a very uh, frequently asked question. People yeah. always want to know. Well, and the thing is, the, sewing the way a sewing machine works, for those of you electronics people who don't know, the top thread comes like from the top and it goes through a bunch of, of hooks and then to, to uh, properly tension it and then goes through a needle and then that needle goes up and down through your fabric. And then there's another thread that is in a bobbin on the underside and the two threads catch each other and that's how it sews. So the, the bobbin thread has to pass through a lot um, fewer areas. And um, since the steel thread has different physical properties from like a cotton or a polyester, like it's not, um, it's not sticky, it's not flowy the way a cotton thread is, it's kind of heavy, um, it can get stuck or um, you know have friction or heat up. And so we recommend putting it in the bobbin um, is what we've had the best luck with, getting tension to sew traces. And the two-ply works great for that. The three-ply is a little thick for the bobbin of a regular sewing machine, but um, I have access to an industrial machine now. Well, we have one too. Yeah. Um, uh, that I want to try play sure. around with with the thicker thread. And embroidery machines too, I've seen some experiments um, with that. So yeah. Okay. Well, those are all the questions. Um, we should give away should we the give away? prize. Or should we talk about this? It's not. It is out yet. Yeah. It is out yet. Please ask. Yeah, we can. Um, why don't we give away the Gemma and okay. then we'll... Uh, we have a special new product that we just put in the store that we can show. So like this is put in the store after we put together the show. Yeah. Oh. All right. They didn't. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> Whatever hit the table first. Oh, it's Dean. Dean won. Dean oh, great. Ambrose. The person who wanted to know about the wireless uh, flora Dean, type stuff. Dean, if you're watching, you have just won a Gemma. I will. I will. Please email you that information. But yeah. you can also email support at adafruit.com to claim your prize. OK. With the last couple of minutes, why don't you show the Gemma and then our new, um, yes. it's out. You can get it product. It's out. You can <laughs> yeah. get it. So. so here's Gemma. It's itty bitty. And I can show you an earring, too. Yeah. Super tiny. So for, for scale here, the flora is exactly the same size as the NeoPixel ring. So imagine that this would be a flora. And then the battery goes on the back. Yeah. I like it. And then this product that we just released um, is the, this flexible permaproto. So we have the permaproto for easily um, yeah. permanent your breadboarded electronics designs. And now we got it in this cool, um, uh, it's this weird, who makes this stuff? Like 3M or something? The weird, yeah. The, the weird, uh, like flexible stuff with the copper clad. Yeah, it is a flexible circuit board. It's very new. And this is something that we're actually not sure what people are going to do with it. So we wanted to start off with the Permaproto. One of the things you can do with this is you can um, cut strips out. You can bend it. You can use it for um, wearables. Um, you'll probably see this in medical applications where there has to be a flexible circuit board around like a you know body part or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're interested in this, there's a couple uh, projects, products, companies that are also doing flexible circuit boards. Last night, um, I hung out with Bunny, who's working on kind of these stickers that are, that are um, it's on his website. Um, mm -hmm. If you search for Bunny Studios, uh, you can see some of his flexible circuits. So it's like a flexible Arduino. And then there's another company that's uh, doing something with Dragon uh, Innovation. They're like a hardware accelerator startup thing. And it's uh, basically a, like a flexible Arduino. Ooh. And uh, same thing, where um, you'll, be, you'll be able to do lots of different things on a flexible um, uh, platform. And uh, what people are going to do with this, we don't know. Uh, they're not cheap. So uh, that's the only thing. It's not like a, a, a circuit board, which is very, very inexpensive. This is a little bit more expensive. So like seven bucks or so. And it's, right. You know, but that's not bad for what Super it is. Super flexible and lightweight. So like whenever, I mean, even I could even build um, the TV Be Gone circuit on one of these, and yeah. to put in a, my TV Be Gone jacket. Like right now, the TV Be Gone jacket, it goes. You know, you put when you're putting a full weight PCB in an article of clothing, you're limited. Your fabric choices are limited, right? Yeah. And a lot of people are like, oh, Becky, I want to put like a big PCB in my uh, flowy dress, yeah. and like it's gonna tug an, and sag. An and NFC reader. <laughs> an <laughs> NFC reader, yeah. and it's gonna tug and snag and and be heavy and. Um, um, this, the idea that we could make circuits on this flexible thing instead of a, a fiberglass um, circuit board makes yeah. it that much lighter and easier to implement. So, I mean, yeah. cool. All right. All right. Well, don't forget, everyone, the code is Gemma. This code expires tonight. It's for everything in the floors and wearable section, 10% off. 
code is Gemma. We'll have more Gemmas in stock. So we just sold out. They became. You don't have to. You actually can't <laughs> buy a Gemma with this code right now, but you can buy yeah. anything else with code Gemma. Gemma and Trinket became a little bit more popular than we thought, and so um, a bunch of people came in and just uh, bought them out. That. It always happens. It happens. It happens now. <laughs> well, you know, eight months into development, yeah. uh, actually more for Gemma and Trinket, the same thing. It was a lot of work, and it finally all came together. It's great. It's super awesome. Okay. I can't wait to see what, pro what Gemma projects you make once you can get your hands on one. Or those of you who have already bought them, you owe it to everyone else to make your project <laughs> and share it so that we can all That's right. get excited. That's right. That's what the internet is there for. I know, right? Cat and videos and videos of your projects. So remember, if you want to um, enter our giveaway, you can leave a question. And if it's featured on the show, you'll be entered into an hour where we'll give away every week. And we'll be back again next uh, Wednesday yeah. with another live episode of Wearable Electronics with me, Becky Stern. Thanks, Bill. Bye-bye. And we'll see some of you at Maker Faire. Oh, yeah. Come say hi. Bye-bye.